Scotland's Justice Secretary has expressed faith in the Scottish Prison Service's decision to place a transgender woman convicted of raping two women while he was a man in a women's prison. It's, to be honest with you, quite difficult for me to say all of that, actually. Isla Bryson began her transition, his transition, to become a woman after being found guilty of two rapes as a man. Currently being held in a segregated unit in Stirling Women's Prison, it will be up to officials which gendered prison he will be incarcerated at. With me now is Kelly J. Keane, founder of Standing for Women. Kelly, this is an absolute shocker. I quite literally struggled to say the words here, not because I've got any fear of misgendering anyone, just because apparently political correctness gets in the way of all this nonsense. So we have a man who raped two women and then transitioned into womanhood, womanhood during a trial who's now going to be in a woman's prison. Have I woken up and gone to hell? Shocked, I'm t I tell you, I'm absolutely shocked that somebody uh, convicted of two violent, grotesque rapes would then call themselves a woman to try and get into a women, women's prison. I mean, it's hilarious because it's preposterous, but actually for those women in those prisons, it must be scary as hell. Do you think that right at the core of this, there is something that thinks that, well, female convicts don't have rights? I think there must be uh, somewhat uh, some of that attitude to women who uh, end up in prison. I, I don't think we do care about prisoners very much at all. Um, you know, most of us would like to see prisoners rehabilitated uh, and coming back into society as better citizens than, than when they went into prison. I don't think that actually is what prisons achieve in this country. I think they're overcrowded, they're underfunded, um, and often they're a little bit too weirdly easy in, in bizarre ways, but they don't seem to do the job. But they're certainly not doing the job when you allow someone I mean, any man in a woman's prison, as far as I'm concerned, is an absolute no. I don't care what they've done. Uh, you're born male, uh, you commit a crime, you go into a man's prison, end of story. However, uh, to then sort of do it in the first place is grotesque, but to send someone convicted of crimes, violent sexual crimes against women, and, you know, just for a pink handbag, a, a bag coat and a terrible wig, uh, he yeah. can now go into a women's prison is... It's preposterous. But but it, it is literally that, though, isn't it? It's a wig on, it's a frock, and it's a handbag, and a change of name from the original, which is Adam Graham, which I think is probably the name that I'm certainly going to continue to use throughout the course of this. Now, what would you say to trans rights campaigners and the ECHR, which says refusal to recognise someone identified gender may constitute a violation of the Human Rights Act. Gosh, where to start? Uh, what would I say to them? I'd probably start with grow up and put, put your big girl pants on. Uh, it, it's just grow up. It's just come on. The, we're not falling for it. Most people are proud uh, to be uh, truthful in this issue and they will say it. Uh, how people in power and authority who are supposed to be paid a good salary for doing a good job get away with such idiocy. I am just staggered. I used to think when I was younger I couldn't possibly be an MP because I'm not qualified. And, and now every day of the week I think I'm massively overqualified for such a role. Well, because there is a big political angle to this. There's the gender recognition bill that's going through and we are told constantly about numerous different things in this country by the way but we're told oh well don't worry this kind of thing will be an outlier this worst case scenario situation will almost yeah. never happen bingo here we are male rapist in a woman's prison does this bill make it yeah. any more likely that this stuff will happen on the rag a hundred percent look the gender recognition act in the united kingdom when they were debating it back in the 90s uh, probably before you were born patrick when they were debating it back in the 90s uh norman tebbett talked about uh the danger of these men ending up in women's prisons and he was treated as if he was saying the most ridiculous thing anybody had ever heard because that would never happen and in scotland there are more men uh, per capita, uh, serving time as women than there are in England and Wales. So we're doing a little bit better um, in England and Wales, but Scotland are just 
They're diving head into the most ludicrous of all situations with their gender reform bill. And I, I think we should just get rid of all of it altogether. There is no such thing, as far as I'm concerned, as, as sex change. OK, very, very quickly, Kelly. Sorry to uh, put the squeeze on you on this situation, but would you back some kind of public vote on this? Because this is where it all falls down for me. You have a fraction of a percentage of people for whom they actually really care about this, an even smaller percent who are bonkers decision-makers, some would argue, in various different houses of uh, our political uh, forums in this country making these decisions. A public vote would knock this out of the park, would it not? A public vote would, but w women's groups would have to be given the opportunity to speak because we are all too often silenced. But yes, a public vote. Kelly, thank you very much, as ever. Kelly Jackie, there, founder of Standing for Women.